All right, guys, in this one, we have a 2010 Subaru Forester. Uh, apparently, there was a DTC of a 2097, which indicates that the the bank one sensor two uh, O2 sensor is actually reading rich. The reason that I decided to do this video is because I don't actually have a video out there yet on to uh, wideband O2 sensors. So um, I thought I'd take this time and show you guys uh, how to take and go about maybe verifying if a wideband O2 sensor might be faulty. All right. Now, I don't think that we're going to catch the issue. At the same time, we might if we poke around a little bit uh, further. Okay. Um, so what... I'm gonna do first is just quickly explain how a narrow band sensor works. All right, a narrow band sensor works on the basis of a 400 millivolt bias voltage. All right, that 400 millivolt bias voltage is gonna end up being your stoichiometric. So let's think about 14.7 to one being 450 uh, millivolts. All right, anything above that number on a narrow band is gonna end up being rich and anything below that number is going to be lean. Now, the way that the sensor works on to with narrow bands is that it's looking for a switch so up down rich lean rich lean and it's trying to get it to stay at that stoichiometric as best as possible now wide bands work a little bit differently all right where uh, we're looking at narrow bands using a uh, voltage that's going to be going up down up down between zero to one volts a wide band uses what is called lambda which is a lambda of one, which is stoichiometric, and it's gonna be using uh, milliamps in order to determine if the system is rich or lean. Now, if we go off the basis of a narrow band where rich is gonna end up being uh, high voltage and lean is gonna end up being low voltage, when you're looking at a wide band, you gotta look at it opposite, all right? So just take it and flip it around, okay? So anything that has a small or lower than zero millivolts, okay, so negative millivolts, uh, you are looking at a rich condition. Anything that you look at with a high, higher than zero millivolt, uh, milliamps, sorry, not millivolts, anything higher than uh, zero milliamps, we are looking more at a rich, uh, lean condition going on. So you just gotta take it, you just gotta invert those numbers. So anything with a lambda that is uh, lower than one is gonna end up being a uh, rich mixture and anything with a lambda higher than one is gonna end up being a lean mixture. So the milliamps and the lambda numbers kind of follow each other. And what we're looking for is a lambda of one, all right? And the milliamps, if we're at zero or close to zero, that's perfect, that means that we're stoichiometric. So uh, when we're looking at scan data, I'll come in here real quick. We'll go get some uh, scan data for everybody. Uh, not trouble codes. I wanted live data. Sorry about that. All right. So what we're going to be looking for is our lambda number. Uh, air fuel sensor current. I don't know if you guys see right here. We're at zero, zero milliamps, so there's not really anything uh, going on with that. Uh, air fuel sensor number one. I think that is our lambda. I'm not too sure. Let's go check. No. All right. So we're at 0.99. Nothing really uh, going on there. Uh, let's keep going. See if we can find anything else. If not, we might go into generic uh, mode just to see if we can get something else in here. Rear two signal rich on. Now, from what I can tell, there is no drivability issues with this car. It's just that there's a code that comes on and off, on and off. So now we can't forget that this system also uses an EGR valve. Now that EGR valve could be slightly stuck open, uh, which would then be allowing uh, some gases from the exhaust to get back into the cylinders, which then could cause a rich condition. So um, we got to look at in all areas when we're dealing with an issue like this. All right, so we're not really getting anything on here. So we're going to exit this. All right, we're going to go into the OBD, OBD system. We are going to take codes found zero. Let's just see. It says zero codes, but is there zero codes? Let's go see. No. 
So this is the one that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, these ones, I'm pretty sure, was because somebody was playing around in the system. But this P2197 is the one that we have to go. So bank one uh, to rich. All right. Uh, let's go to live data. Let's see if we can get our lambda numbers. I can show you guys what that looks like on screen. The reason I'm making this video is because there are still some uh, technicians out there, not everybody, but there are still some technicians that have a hard time with the oxygen sensors and using them for their diagn diagnostics. So um, I thought I'd just make this video real quick for it, all right? So bank one, bank one. As you can see, our fuel trims are pretty much at zero. So I don't really think that we're gonna have anything wrong there. Um, if you guys can't see that, I'll bring them up on screen in a minute. Okay. Um, our, uh, this one should be our rear which looks pretty steady so I don't think that we're gonna have any issues on that uh, this system right here in case anybody's wondering uses a, a narrow band on the bank one sensor two and a um, a lambda sensor on bank one sensor one so if we see right here we're a little bit below uh, the the one so but we come pretty close to that one okay so I'm not I don't think that we're having an issue right now all right and we'll use this one also just to show you guys the voltages all right so as we see right here our fuel trim okay is pretty much at zero our short term and long term uh, calculated together we have is pretty much zero our oxygen sensor is at the uh, rear O2 is at 0.72 nothing really wrong there all right we see our uh, lambda sensor okay which is sticking pretty close to that one all right, so I don't think that we're having an issue there. When I give a gas, we should see this number right here. Should drop and also our lambda number should also drop. So uh, what this will mean is that as we're giving gas, uh, the mixture is getting rich. And when we let go of the gas, that means that our mixture is getting lean. So higher than one equals lean. And if we come and we look at our numbers, uh, our two volt uh, range, um, higher than the Two point like two volts equals uh, lean condition also. All right, so I'm gonna give it some gas. All right, so as we could see right here and right here, um, this is where I actually pe press on the gas pedal, and as we can tell, we had a momentary drop in our uh, in our voltage and also onto our uh, lambda sensor. Now, what that indicates is that the mixture is going rich, right? And the sharp rise is when I actually let go of the pedal, and that means that the system went into its fuel cut, and now I'm getting a lean condition. If we look up at our bank two sensor one. Uh, bank one sensor two, sorry. We see that we have a slight rise when I pressed onto the gas pedal, indicating that the system went rich. And then when I let go, we have a large drop, which means that the system went lean, which is uh, indicating our fuel cut uh, scenario. As you can see right there, and then we come back to our uh, our one. But then we come down to our basically our stoichiometric. So 2.165 uh, volts on this vehicle is basically where it's uh, saying it has stoichiometric. Now if we look here, we're a little bit on the rich side, then we go to the lean. So, but there's not much variation. We're still sticking pretty close to that one. So right now there is no issue on this car. Uh, I'm pretty sure even if I drive it, I won't get an issue. My long-term and short-term fuel trims are still pretty much at, uh, what, 1.6 total percent. So um, I don't think that we're having an issue on that. Okay. Like I said, I don't think that we're having an issue right now. So um, what we're gonna do is just do a, with that little test right there, with me pressing on the gas, that's basically me enriching the, the mixture. So what we're gonna do right now is that we're gonna go out to the front of the vehicle with a scanner. Leave my phone. All right. Uh, we're gonna just pull uh, a vacuum line for the intake and we're gonna see if we can uh, get this guy to uh, go lean on us. All right, I'm pretty sure we will. I'm trying to get this with the least amount of glare as possible. I don't know how well this is gonna work. I'm just gonna put in, pull an intake hose real quick and we're gonna take a look at it, what happens. Okay, what ends up happening? All right, as you see our rear O2 went lean and then our friend O2 went rich as the system tried to richen up the mixture. All right, so for me, this system is actually working properly right now. I don't believe that there is an issue. 
Um, so, and if we look at our long-term and short-term fuel terms, when I pulled the, the line, all right, we see everything climb onto my short-term because we want to try add fuel because we're sensing more oxygen. All right, then eventually my long-term is going to come into play. Like I said, I don't think that I'm having an issue right now, but I might still have a bad EGR valve. So what I think I'm going to do real quick is just... Uh, Pull the EGR valve on this vehicle because it is pretty easy to get to and uh, we're going to take and we are going to uh, verify the pintle on the inside and see maybe if it's sticking. Alright, so we see it right here. It's just this one little connector and we're going to pull the EGR valve off and see what happens from there. If it comes off easily. If it doesn't, it might just stay there. Alright, so give me a minute and I'll be right back. I'm gonna go take a quick look at this with a light. We're gonna see if this guy's moving properly. All right, so from what I could see, my valve was actually stuck open just a little bit. Um, now it seems to be seated properly. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna take and lube up the, the shaft on the inside. A little bit uh, we're gonna I'm gonna make it work a little bit I'm gonna try to clean off the carbon that's uh, stuck around it and uh, we're gonna retake a look at our numbers after I'm done all right so everything is back in everything is plugged up um, down to the, the ratchet uh, I'm gonna take and start this guy up and we're gonna take a look at my numbers again all right I'll bring you guys inside for that don't no need to be out at the vehicle outside the vehicle anymore Ah, try to give you guys a view of this. All right, so what are we going to be looking at? We're on the rich side, uh, lean side, sorry. So we're closer to the one now. Now we're switching up between the one. Uh, this one is my bank one sensor. Bank one sensor two. And now we are closer to the 450 millivolts. That looks good. Um, that actually looks really good compared to what it was. All right. We're seeing a lot more movement onto everything right now. Bring this guy, that guy, and that guy. We'll show. And, and that's looking a lot better to me. All right. Going to my fuel cut. Enriching it. Bring it down. Yeah, that looks a lot better. All right. Stays a little bit high, but not overly. All right. Go back up to that 16. Let's just leave this guy sit here for a minute and uh, I'll bring you guys back. I want to see what happens with my uh, bank, uh, bank one sensor two uh, voltage. I see if it stays closer to that 450 now. All right. It's for sure that if I'm giving a gas, it's supposed to move. All right. But before it was stuck at that uh, 755 uh, millivolts, which to me, it, w it seemed to be a little bit on the high side. All right. If I leave it go, we're going to go into a fuel cut. I come back up, 620. We should be pretty much steady. Here on the Lambda, we're closer to the, the one. We're actually switching between the one to rich lean. So I'm okay with that. Uh, my bank one sensor one uh, Lambda, uh, Lambda equivalent sensor, if I'm not mistaken. All right, we are, we're actually switching now a little bit. So I'm liking that, okay? So this is saying that we're a little bit rich. This is saying that we're a little bit on the rich side also. Five. All right, so let's leave this go and we'll see uh, where everything ends up in about five minutes. 
All right, so it's been a couple minutes. Uh, bring you guys back. Uh, we'll go back into live data. Let's go see where our um, bank one uh, sensor two voltage is at now. Instead of 755, I think we should be more around the 600 range. Still seems a little bit high for me, but at the same time, maybe if we bring this onto a road test, it might clear it up a little bit. So I think that's what we might end up doing. So we have, he's good, he's good. He's switching, so I'm, I'm liking that. Um, my sensor two, output voltage bank one. Uh, we're about that 735 range. So I think that that is normal. I wish I had a car to compare to, but I don't. So uh, let's bring this guy for a road test and see what happens. All right, everybody. Um, so got back from the road test. Um, everything is working the way as it should right now. Uh, there's not really much that I can do at this point um, because everything is working the way that it should. My fuel trim stayed pretty much at zero the whole time. I had correction. Uh, going positive negative positive negative um, but and no more than maybe about three percent um, my equivalence ratio never went into the rich condition uh, my rear O2 stayed steady the whole time uh, my sensor voltage equivalence uh, everything checked out so at this point right here what I'm gonna do because uh, this is a two trip cycle code uh, the P2097 so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take and I'm gonna turn the car off I'm um, gonna leave it sit for a half an hour and then after that we're gonna take it and we're gonna relook at all our data again after half an hour.